Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Queenie, for those who don't know me. Today you guys are getting this morning realness, okay? The puffy morning face, the deep morning voice, it is what it is. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell, and leave a comment down below. Let your comment not be a spoiler, don't be that person. We've been through this for all season, you know? I feel like eventually we started to get into the groove of not spoiling. Let's continue that, okay? A lot to get into. A lot to get into. After Uche couldn't get his point across when it came to Lydia and him trying to put her in her place, if you ask me, he's now trying to throw Lydia under the bus with Milton. She was on the other side, like getting in Aaliyah's head. So it told me that she was still like upset about how things like ended between us. The way that she just like boldly lied to my face with no remorse, I'm like, I don't think I can trust this person. Come with me, quick. Can I get five minutes? No. Let him have five minutes. Hey, can I? Don't let her control you. One thing I have said and will continue to say is that for the most part, when Uche talks, it's not that I don't believe what he is saying, but how he says things makes me think either he's twisting things or he's very condescending when he says that. Like I just, mm, I just don't take well to when he talks, right? And so, and as much as I do believe Lydia was problematic in dealing with him, if she was so bad, if she was such a problem, why have they been dealing with each other for over two years? Furthermore, why did you just sleep with her three months ago? That's the part I'm not understanding. Someone in the comments was like, um, well, Queen, you say Uche's tone is off, but obviously Lydia keeps going back with him. Yeah, Uche keeps going back with her. It goes both ways. They kept choosing each other for however long it was happening. So if Lydia really is that cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, why did he keep going back? Mr. Even Cubed, Mr. Level Headed, Mr. I Don't Do No Wrong, something in the milk ain't clean. I also want to know whether or not he was messing. Actually, he did kind of confirm that. If you didn't watch the um, Uche's Instagram video thing, you want to skip past this. If you don't want to be spoiled, skip, 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 skip. But in that video, I read one of his stories saying that he couldn't have cheated if they weren't together. So he's not denying that there were other women involved. He's just saying she wasn't my main woman to begin with. Uche's here trying to have his moment and the women start going at it and then they turn around and start going at him. It was a mess. Is your face okay? Hold on. She... She, she yeah, blocked. I mean, she, hold on. Re, re, a can, can I finish? Can I finish? Yeah, you're looking yeah, at yeah. me. Okay. Okay. So, um, to follow somebody around and tell them things about me, like, oh, that's Uche. That's not how that happened on our yeah, side. Yeah, that's she, she had no, Miriam, Miriam, she stop, had stop, no stop. You're bitter and you're saying fake. Saying all the nonsense you said, but you can't fake. say it to my face. Where do you face? live at? Do you have a business? Do you not have a business? I'm not Lydia or Aaliyah. You're not gonna make me cry. I'll read you for the filth you are. Yes, I work in Saudi Arabia. Yes, I have a fucking degree from Johns Hopkins University. You can look that up. I really hate the depiction of Uche on the show. I do. I'm not gonna say I hate Uche because I don't even know him to hate him. Furthermore, hate is a very strong word. But the character that they have concocted on this damn show, I don't like him at all. What annoys me the most is that Uche hides behind the soft voice and the articulation of his words. It's so manipulative in my opinion. Like, mm -mm, mm -mm, I do not trust it. And the same thing that I said with the Johnny and Izzy situation, if you're gonna get active in a conversation, I'm gonna get active too. So I love that Miriam was like, oh, hell no. Hell no. I'm not gonna do this with you. You're not gonna talk to me in that way. Listen, do I think Miriam is sketchy? If you were on live yesterday, you know the answer to that question. So, um. It was kind of funny to see her, you know, buck up against Uche, but I was glad that she did because you're not going to be on your high horse going off, talking like you, you know everything and everybody else is wrong and you're just the godfather of the group. No, no, no. So the Uche lovers in the chat, love that for you. I'm not one of them. 
now we have the other lawyer in the room. Honestly, the next the next season, if I see a lawyer, I'm going to be vexed. The other lawyer in the room is now questioning Lydia on whether or not she knew Uche was going to be here. I know you have good intentions. Uche is like very convincing though. He said oh, that you were basically stalking him. Like, it made sure Oh yeah, he showed me screenshots. Then I'm showing her the screenshots, right? Okay, you don't, you don't need it. Okay. Lydia planned to be here with me so that we could end up here together. But you don't think that somebody's past determines their behavior in the future? No, but I understand there's nuances and things are situational. How have y'all's communication been generally? Actually really good. Lydia, baby, we can only have your back as long as you're honest. <laughs> Girl. I know I don't like Uche, but your story don't make no damn sense either, okay? I definitely think there was some element of stalking, especially if she's saying that she believed that she was cheated on. Here's the thing. Could they not have been together? For sure. But a lot of women who date cisgendered heterosexual men know that you can be under the impression that you're in a relationship, even though you really aren't, and that is a tactful thing. They do that on purpose. So am I under the belief that this girl believed she was in a relationship with this man? I can believe it. I can believe it. So therefore, the behavior, very unhinged. Baby girl, you, you were stalking them girls. You pulled up to his house. You did those things. Just stand on it. I feel like you should just stand on it because trying to deny it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't make any sense. Um... Yeah, with this relationship, I just, I think that Uche is very selective with how he tells the story. And that's the lawyer in him. Obviously, he's not going to boldface lie because now you have to backtrack on the lie. But if I omit the truth and I tell you the parts that are in line with what I'm trying to do and say, is he really in the wrong? You know, he is trying to paint a story. Lydia will outright deny things. And I'm like, mm, now that's where he gets you. That's where he gets you because if you bold face lie, he can counteract that, right? So then Milton is talking to Uche and basically Milton is like, listen, that's my woman. I'm going to stick beside her. Perception is reality. This is what she perceives and I'm going to go with my woman on that one. Now Uche is going and fishing, fishing, fishing for issues between them. Do you think she's a good communicator? Do you really think she's mature? Do you really think she's this? And that I'm just looking out for you. Look out for yourself, Uche. Look out for yourself. I didn't ask you to look out for me. So go about your business, okay? I really, really, really love how Milton was sticking beside his woman. And I hope, I hope that the problematic things that Uche was trying to point out don't show up in their relationship because he just took such a hard, you know, stance in her favor. But yeah, I'm of this opinion. Um, stick beside your partner and let them prove to you, you know, whether or not this is a compatible relationship because just to take the words of everybody else especially somebody who is jaded from that relationship to me can be problematic can be here goes another man izzy who has a weird vendetta with a woman johnny trying to look out for his friend and he doesn't want another woman to get in between their friendship mm -hmm. i don't hate the girl i just didn't think it was cool to like do that to us. I'm not trying to persuade you on it. That's not my intent here. I hope you guys work out, honestly. But they're trying to convince you of a story that probably didn't happen. We were there in the pods to know that you're full of shit, so it coincides with the real world. Go ask anyone out there if I'm a shitty person. I, I, I've already done that, and I'm I'm very confident in my opinion. I'm just looking out for you because you're good. an amazing All guy. All four of us are not good. <laughs> we're good. Is he so annoying? He's so annoying. Oh my gosh. Oh. He really, really believes he's the poster child of emotional intelligence and it irks my spirit. However, Johnny is sketchy. Um, Johnny is and will always be sketchy. Her all of a sudden wanting Chris. Sketchy. If you were on yesterday's live, you know. And another thing I need to clear up about yesterday's live because one girl commented this and it really pissed me off. I never said Vanessa was desperate for children from her own womb. I said she's desperate for a love is blind child. We see that on every reunion, okay? Y'all know how I feel about womb policing. I was not policing Vanessa's womb, please. 
when I do like lives and stuff, take things in context, like take the whole conversation in context. But anyways, if you were on live yesterday, you know, um, Chris and his whole situation. So Chris is sketchy too, but definitely Johnny. Mm -mm. Yeah, Johnny's not it. Johnny's not it. Johnny also thought that Stacy was being deceitful because she wasn't transparent with Johnny on everything that was happening with her and Izzy. Considering how Johnny was talking about them behind their back, it obviously was a good decision for Stacy to keep her cards close to her chest. She also did shed a tear for Johnny when things didn't work out for her. Well, that's what she said. I don't remember seeing that. And Johnny instead decided to throw insults at both of them. So Johnny, if we're going to call a spade a spade, let's let's take the whole conversation into consideration. Like, girl, you you were being nasty. You were being nasty to Stacy in the pods. Let's not pretend like that didn't happen. This is the longest 10 minutes I've ever experienced in my life because Lydia and Milton still have that dinner to go to. We listen, 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 listen. These ain't a douchebag. I would always defend you. It's so minute. What? It's minute. You're a badass. A great ass job. You make great ass money. You're independent as fuck. Now, we have a dinner to go to. Like I said, shout out to Milton for sticking beside his woman. Shout out to him for not letting outside opinions inform his own opinions of his woman. Also, again, like I said, um, you do need to do your own investigation, though. And don't just disregard everything everybody says. It just depends who it's coming from. Somebody who seems to have this weird agenda for Lydia, like I wouldn't believe them because why are you so hell bent on trying to make me turn against this woman? But then you're also gonna say, she's such an amazing woman and I have so much love for her and I, I felt a need to protect her and the pot. Like, mm-mm, mm-mm. It's, it's confusing, doesn't make any sense. I cannot wait for Lydia to share her side of things. So we've been hearing a lot from Uche and nothing from her. After this pod squad reunion situation, uh, Stacy and Izzy are at home still talking about the events of the night. And at first, Stacy was kind of happy that Izzy was pummeling Johnny until she started to think to herself, now why does he care so much? Trying to look out for Chris and I think she's like... Why do you care? He's not a wounded dog. He's I, a I, I, I know. Let me talk. You're trying to look out for him with Johnny? I was just trying to- Why? This has nothing to do with Johnny. I saw you railing into her ass and I got so turned on. I'm so glad that I trusted like my heart and my gut to be with you. I hate to use the word like sassy. I feel like it's being overused on social media right now, but is he? This man said it was a turn on to see Stacy shitting on his ex, for lack of a better term. Okay, um, to me that was kind of weird. On top of that, I felt like he was deflecting from what Stacy was saying. Stacy was saying, um, I do feel like your investment in making sure Johnny goes down is a concern for me. I, what did he say? Uh, I forget what his response was because I watched this last night, but he was just deflecting, deflecting. And I'm like, she's here saying that something bothers her. And instead of acknowledging her feelings and maybe adding context to what you were doing, you just want to brush past it. It's not even about Johnny. I don't care about Johnny. Da -da 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 -da. That's not what she's asking. She's asking to you why it was so important for you to handle yourself the way that you did, because now it's making her feel like she was just the better pick of the bunch. Like she feels like um, he says things along the lines of, I'm so glad I chose you and not her, rather than you are my person, regardless of whatever was going on. Like Stacy kind of feels like the best of the bunch rather than the one. Then Stacy goes on to talk about she's looking for Izzy to do more for her. At first it seemed like it was household stuff, like I need you to clean more, cook more, whatever. And I was like, not you being a house husband, Izzy. But no, um, he does. He said, this is so confusing because he said he cooks and cleans. But then when he was talking to his mom, he said he had yet to cook for her. Watching back in the edit, he did say he hasn't cooked for her yet. 
even to her face, but he does say that he does do the cleaning. So that was interesting. But what she's actually looking for is more romantic gestures. She feels like she comes home and he's just kind of like there. He doesn't really appreciate her. He doesn't show her he loves her through physical activities, physical actions and stuff. He seems to think that he does do that. So I wonder what the gestures are that he says that he does. I think he said he buys flowers for her every Monday. I swear they've only been together for two Mondays. <laughs> swear. <laughs> then he goes on talking about he feels like he can't measure up to her expectations and he doesn't feel like he's good enough for her. You cook for me twice. Mm -hmm. Put aside that. What have I not done for you? We've had so many times on our own, and this is now the first time that I'm hearing this. Sometimes you make me feel like what I do is not good enough all the time. I don't believe anything I'm good. Why are you crying? I feel like you could be the best person I could be, and I feel like I don't ever meet your expectation. There's always something, and I'm just, I'm over it. Guys, close your eyes and see Johnny's face. They sounded exactly the same. No wonder why he was so triggered by her. He sees himself in her. <laughs> That's me reaching. But I'm just like, you ugh, you whine just like Johnny. That That is so comedic. The fact that Milton might be the most mature man of the group is quite the plot twist. My perception is something different than his perception and your perception. What is we will continue to live our lives that way. I think I'm just like less... It's emotional, and I'm not saying that in a negative connotation at all. I'm not saying that I should not let Showing him affect emotions him. for yeah, me but it's... in my life is a privilege. I get that I should not let anybody control my emotions, but it was not because of him that I got upset. It was because of my own self. I came to this experience because I wanted to find love. And you know what? I did. Speaking of Lydia saying she came to the show to find her husband in her bio, it did say she was looking for a tall, dark, and handsome man. Um, that describes both Uche and Milton. So we still don't know if you came here for Uche, babe. We don't know. He fits the archetype of what you were looking for. Maybe because you already knew. You already knew. I really want them to, like, I really want them to explain this whole, how does she know? How does she find out? And that's further proof of how connected they were because how, if it was email, how would she have access to your email? If it was Instagram, how would she have access to your Instagram? Nah, the Uche Lydia thing will always perplex me until we have irrefutable evidence of what happened. I know seeing Stacy do her Pilates thing is gonna lead to Raven and Stacy doing some kind of joint Pilates course that'll be on sale for $59.99 in the next couple months, <laughs> okay? But as Stacy is at work, Izzy pulls up to try to rectify the situation between them. It hurt really bad. I feel like I know I'm not perfect. I feel like I put my best efforts in every day with you. The things that I do, I really want reciprocated. Yeah, I know I may be lacking on some parts that I can easily fix. I'm doing my best. Like today, I was still upset and hurt. I still managed to suck it up and let you know that I'm still here. He says that she is stuck on the things that he doesn't do. However, he does so much. For example, even though he was hurt and upset today, he still showed up to tell her that he's still in this. Is that really doing something in the way that she was asking? I don't think so. He made up for it though, because he got her this like mixed bag of gifts where it was a picture of their family photo, like him, her, and the dog, and then a plunger talking about this is a shitty situation, but we'll get through it or something like that. And then these like coupon things saying, you know those couple of coupons, like one ticket for a massage, one ticket for a wash the dishes veto or something, like stuff like that. So I'm like, yeah, those are the things she's looking for. She's looking for gestures, not just words. Izzy's mom gets to meet Stacy. The conversation was, a, it was interesting. It seems as if the mom has reservations about Izzy, but is kind of putting it on her uncertainty of Stacy. Has she cooked for you? 
She did, yeah. I haven't cooked for her, oh, which she's class. been on my ass about it. <laughs> she's tender and sweet and fragile. She's, she's tough to deal with, but she's worth it. I don't want to sound like an overprotective mother or anything like that, but is this really, you know, the person for my son? He's my baby, he's this, he's that. But I also think of you. I don't want you to get hurt. I don't want him to get hurt. Mm -hmm. It, it, it felt like she was saying, oh, well, I don't really know you, so I don't know how this is going to work. Marriage is for life, da, 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 whatever. Girl, you know your son. And we know you know your son because you keep saying, I don't want him to hurt you. Why is that your concern? I don't know. That part, yeah, that part was interesting. And then Stacy kept saying, you know, we have this unspeakable, intangible type of love that I've never felt with anybody else. And these emotions have never been brought out of me besides um, being brought out by Izzy. And then Izzy is like, oh, this is so great. Like he actually started crying. This is not me being extra. He actually started crying. And then he was like, I know she loves me unconditionally. This word again. This unconditionally again. Mm. In an attempt to reassure the mom, Stacy says that she, that falling in love with Izzy was like jumping off a cliff without knowing if she had a parachute. Accurate analogy. Because this man doesn't have a plan. There's no parachute, babe. There is no parachute. Another interjection. Sorry, guys. I was so tired when I filmed this. But the analogy is actually what reassured Izzy's mom. She was very happy to hear that Stacy is so in love and so willing to throw caution in the wind for her son. So, um, yeah. At first, the mom was skeptical. But then she was won over. And I think she's on board. Lastly, we have Lydia, who meets Milton's family. It did not go well, honey. The mama wasn't with it. The sister wasn't with it. The dad was kind of indifferent, but that's typically how dads are on these shows. The uncle was really trying to root for Milton, but yeah, the matriarch was not here for it. Are you familiar yeah. with them? Do you call him Milton or you call him? James? I call him Milton. My husband is James. He's James. Little James is getting married. Little James. We call him Little, Little James. James. Just curious on what a someone 30 would be interested in a 24 year old what do i do not like about him mm -hmm. that should be a laundry list i think it's like the laziness sometimes like it does bother me but he can learn he's so young yes he can learn. i didn't even know you were thinking about marriage i mean we've been out a couple times and he's definitely mentioned he, he wants to settle down well, how did that just pop into your noggin and say now's the time because it's phony typically i'd be looking at the mom like you know your son is the one with the issues. However, the son is the 24-year-old man marrying a six, not 60, marrying a 30-year-old woman. So she's aware that her son is young. There are things that he needs to learn because he's a young man, you know? And you got to think about it too. Even though I think, okay, he's 24, there are certain things that he should know, like especially the living habits. Me, I live by myself. So it's okay if I have a pile of clothes beside me, whatever. It's just me. But if you're trying to cohabitate with somebody, there's certain things you got, like, you, you gotta get it together, okay? Um, oh, I was saying you also gotta think, though, he had to mature so quickly when it came to, like, academia. So he graduated already with a something from uni and then he went straight from school to the workforce like i think there's some socialization things that he just hasn't learned yet because he is young and because his life academically was accelerated so fast i don't know that's just how i'm trying to justify it in my mind the mom basically is trying to question what a grown woman would want what a man who's 24 and she's Lydia Lydia was saying that regardless of the age Milton so far has been the most mature man in how he was able to articulate the things that he wants in this relationship she hasn't experienced that as of yet he started to feel as if they were grilling her and so he was like okay can y'all stop like I don't like this she was handling herself very well if you ask me but 
he didn't like that they were trying to grill her. And then um, basically the mom said marriage is a business transaction and she doesn't feel like this one is worth the investment. So I don't know how Milton, baby junior James, what did, what did they say? All the family, all the men are named James. Like he's the fifth James or something like that. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, Milton Lil James is not ready for marriage, according to the mother and according to the sister and according to the dad. The only people who will root for him are the roommate and his uncle. So we'll see if he's ready. We'll see if he's ready. As always, do not spoil in the comments. However, leave a comment down below, like the video, subscribe and hit the bell, and I'll see you in the next one.